The Vape Passion Show, episode 97. In this episode, an e-juice review of I Love Donuts by Mad Hatter. Get a free magazine subscription to Vape News Magazine. The pros and cons of vape clones and knockoffs. Two years later, and Public Health England feels even more strongly that vaping saves lives. The FDA advisory board votes against Philip Morris IQOS. People believe a joke that the jewel causes cancer. And my image was used without permission, and I can edit it, so what should I do? Welcome back to The Vape Passion Show. I'm Alex, this is episode 97, and I'm recording this on Tuesday, February 13th, 2018. So I've been a little quiet lately. I'm still publishing reviews on YouTube, but the show hasn't been coming out very regularly, and I want to explain a little bit. Um, So one big reason is that my daughter has been really sick for about two weeks. Not the flu or anything, but a high temperature, coughing, congestion, and all that good stuff. And then she got an ear infection, and she's only four, so she needs a lot of care. And she wasn't sleeping very well, which means I wasn't sleeping well, so I just haven't had much energy. So yeah, kids, as soon as they go into daycare or preschool, they get sick all the damn time. I've also been really busy with school and work, you know, the usual stuff, but I've also just, I've been trying to focus on getting more reviews out. Um, I haven't been doing a great job of that, but I have been recording reviews. So um, that's just kind of what's been going on. All right, so let's talk about what I've been vaping on lately. So a few weeks ago, VaporForLife.com sent me a bunch of really cool stuff, and I finally finished all of those reviews. They sent me the Smoke Pro Color, which has been awesome. I use it all the time. It performs great, it looks great, and it's really comfortable. Vapor for Life also sent me some e-juice from Burst E-Liquid, and those reviews are all also, also up right now. And I like them all pretty much. At first, I thought most of them were, were good, but not crazy good, but then I found myself vaping only this e-juice. I still wouldn't go as far as saying that they're crazy good, but they they are pretty good. And I really like the Sherburst flavor, which is an orange sherbet with citrus and watermelon. Can't really taste the watermelon much, but the other flavors come out pretty good. And then I've been vaping the Iconic RDA from Mike Vapes and the Bonza RDA from Vaping Bogan. And I just recorded those reviews right before recording this. Basically, I, I really like both of them. The Iconic is a nice RDA that has pretty good flavor and performs best in squonk mode. I have been enjoying it. And I don't mean to compare the two, but I open the Iconic and the Bonza at the same time. So they're both kind of top of mind. And I, I just have to say that the Bonza is better and it's awesome for me. It's one of my new all-time favorite RDAs. It vapes smooth. It can handle a lot of power. It's super easy to build and the flavor is just really really good. I love it And I've also been testing out the V God mech pro which was sent to me for review by av40.com And this is another product that I'm really happy with the machining is so precise and it feels really high quality And it's beautiful. It has the looks the performance and it feels great The V God pro mech 2 actually just came out like a week ago and it looks just as beautiful as the original But they're very different so I would still say go out and get the V1 if you can afford it It's a little expensive at about $70 But that's actually really affordable for a higher-end mech mod and with the V2 out now Maybe the original model will go on sale or maybe not I don't know mechs hold value for a long time from what I've seen But yeah, if you're in the market for a really nice mech mod check out the original V God mech pro I don't think you'll be disappointed So that's what I've been vaping on and what you can probably expect in upcoming reviews very soon. So now let's get into the show and start with an e-juice review of I Love Donuts by Mad Hatter. This was given to me for the purpose of review directly from the folks at Mad Hatter. They gave this to me a while ago, back when they were really popular. People don't seem to talk about them so much anymore, um, but I always thought that they were a good company. And they actually gave me some of these Uh, little sample packets, which I've never seen before, but I think is a really smart and affordable way to give out samples. Anyway, this is from their original line, which they describe as having the fluffy taste of a baked classic glazed donut with a hint of blueberry. They also have an updated version called I Love Donuts 2, which builds on this original flavor by adding lightly powdered sugar and strengthening the cake and blueberry flavors. I don't have it, and I have never tried it, so I can't tell you if it's good or not. But let's take a look at this one. I don't usually talk about packaging, but the packaging here is really unique. It comes in a nice box and is wrapped in tissue paper, just like how you'd get a donut. And then on the bottle, they have a list of vaping facts, which is designed to look like the ingredient label on a food product. 
It's little things like that that can make a product memorable. They did a, a great job with this stuff. Opening the bottle, the first thing that I noticed was the blueberry smell. It's not strong, but it comes right out. Up close, I get a slight hint of baked donuts, but just barely. I'm vaping this on the Goon 1.5 RDA, built at 0.21 ohms with dual Clapton coils, and I'm using the Smoke Pro Color at 100 watts. Just like the smell, I can taste that blueberry. It's very light. I also get just a slight hint of bakery in there. Not so much donuts, but it does have a bakery taste. Something interesting about this is that I actually get some dryness at the end like you would get eating a baked dessert. I like that. The sweetener in here is really strong. If you like really sweet e-juices, you'll probably like it. I love sweet e-juices, so I do. So you can get this from madhatterjuice.com in 120ml bottles for $29.99, and it comes in nicotine strengths of 0, 3, and 6. Okay, now here's a really cool deal for those of you who still read old school magazines. You can get a free one-year subscription to Vape News Magazine. Vapenews.com, the company behind the actual physical magazine called Vape News Magazine, which you can find in places like Barnes & Noble, is giving away free magazine subscriptions for the full year of 2018, and this is all part of their rebranding strategy. I don't know the whole backstory of the brand, but they launched Vapenewsmagazine.com in 2012, and the first physical version of the magazine in February 2013. At some point, they rebranded to Vapenews.com with new logos to match. Now they want to go back to their original name. Originally I thought this offer was only supposed to last until the end of January, but I just checked the site and I don't see an expiration date anymore. But they are doing a big giveaway in partnership with Smoke that includes an iPhone X, iPads, Apple Watches, and more than uh, 130 Smoke products. To enter the giveaway, you need to subscribe to the magazine for free and fill out the survey. The survey page says that the offer and the contest expires on February 20th, so it might be over by the time you see this, but go check it out just in case. Okay, and now something a little controversial. The pros and cons of vape clones and knockoffs. So back in December, I had originally planned on doing some live shows on YouTube. I had a few ideas for different types of live shows in mind, but I want to talk about one of the ideas in particular. So I'm sure a lot of you know about Fast Tech and how they sell clones of pretty much everything, and almost as quickly as the authentic product is released. I'm not talking about products inspired by other products, I'm talking direct knockoffs, counterfeits. Well, one of my live show ideas was to order a few of the newest clones from Fast Tech and do a big live unboxing and review show. I was really hyped up about the idea at the time, but by the time I got the package, a month later, because Fast Tech is so slow, I had enough time to dwell on it and I just wasn't so sure about the idea anymore. Companies, well, some companies, put a lot of time into the design and manufacturing process of their products. I mean, look at the drop from TVC. Brian spent a ton of time designing the drop. He tested many versions of the RDA, going back and making design changes, and just working hard to perfect it. Then you get clone shops out of China ripping it off without having done any of that labor that went into making it what it is. Some people also worry about the quality of the construction, and this was a bigger problem a couple of years ago. Sometimes there would be shorts in the posts, the positive pin would be messed up, insulators would be missing, or they would just melt on the first hit, things like that. But construction seems to be much better these days. Some clones are even better than the original, at least as far as performance goes, but there are still those occasions where the quality is worse, and even dangerous. I sure as hell wouldn't trust a clone on a mech mod, that's for sure. Another big reason to avoid clones is because it can be hard to trust the materials. I want to know that what I'm vaping on isn't going to poison me. The low prices of clones isn't just because the company didn't spend money on research and development, it's because they use the cheapest materials possible. If it's an atomizer, are they actually using stainless steel like they say they are? I've had clones that claim to be 316 stainless steel and they rusted after one wash. That means it's probably not stainless steel. Stainless steel can rust, sure, but not from running it under the sink and letting it dry one time. A knockoff cloning company isn't going to use the best materials or metal alloys when they're selling a product for only $8. And if it's a knockoff mod, are the internal components safe? Are the wires rated for the power that travels through it? Will it be safe on a charger? Those are all things you gotta keep in mind. Okay, so what might be good reasons to buy clones? Some people say that they buy clones to see if they like them first, and if they do, they'll buy the authentic. I have to wonder how true that really is, to be honest. If, I mean, if you love the clone, are you really gonna buy the authentic? You're already happy with the clone, right? And with how fast products come out, I would bet that most people say, ah, well, I was going to buy it, but it's old now, and then they move on and buy whatever's new. But let's say that you really do plan to buy the authentic. I think it's an okay excuse, but in my experience, clones just aren't close enough to the authentic. That's not to say that clones always suck, but they, are always, they aren't always exact duplicates. Little things can be off. Just minor differences in airflow can totally ruin a product for you. The clone might have turbulent airflow, but the authentic might be smooth. 
So if you don't like the clone, it's not a good representation of the real thing. A lot of people will also say they buy clones because they can't afford the real version. And yeah, that's another okay reason. This really made more sense a couple years ago when RDAs were upwards of $80, but you can get authentic atomizers for less than $30 these days. But let's say that you can't afford $30 either. If you still haven't found the perfect setup and you're at risk of going back to smoking, then yeah, maybe buying a bunch of clones can be okay. I used to buy a lot of clones too, but as I became more of a hobbyist and collector, I didn't want those clones sitting on my shelf anymore. It felt cheap and fake. It's, it's like photoshopping nice rims on your car and posting it online. And funny story, I actually did that 15 years ago, but it was because I was just learning Photoshop in college. It was funny too, because this really pretty girl on MySpace, uh, yeah, MySpace, she started hitting on me and talking about how much she loved my car. So I have this big thing about lying. I just can't do it. it. It just eats at me. So I immediately told her that the rims were fake and then she blocked me. It was still an awesome car though. It was an all white 95 Mustang. Not a classic, but still a lot of fun to drive, especially for someone in their early 20s, which I was at that time. And man, I miss that car. Um, do you know how many crappy cars want to race you when you have a Mustang? Every single day. Anyway, back to the topic. So another reason people buy clones is because of availability problems. Some manufacturers release products in such limited quantities that they're practically impossible to find. But if you want a, a limited product so bad, wouldn't you want the authentic? But you know, I do have to consider that maybe it's not the authenticity that you're after, but the functionality. And I remember when I first got into the hobbyist side of vaping, I kept hearing about how amazing the K-Fun V3 was, but it was impossible to find, so I bought a clone. And the clone was actually pretty good, honestly. I was very happy with it. Oh, and the Veritas RDA2, that was another product that was really hyped up, but it wasn't even being made anymore, so I bought the clone. And it was also a great atomizer. And now you can't even find the clone of the Veritas, so I am glad that I bought one. Another reason in favor of clones might simply be that it's fun to try new products, and you have no intention of buying the authentic anyway. Look at me, for example. When I had this idea for the live show, I went to Fast Tech and looked at the latest releases. I had no idea what these products were or who made them. They just seemed interesting and unique, so I ordered them. It's just fun. I don't need an authentic to have fun or enjoy it, right? Is it unethical if I never planned to buy the original anyway? The designer wasn't losing money, but I also have to play devil's advocate with myself here and ask, what if further down the road, as good reviews came out for one of those RDAs, I would have actually bought the authentic? But since I had the clone, I decided not to, so. But coming back to the fun aspect of vaping, vaping is a really fun hobby. The fun part about it is trying new things. New devices, new atomizers, and new e-juices. It never gets old. And for a lot of people, it's the fun aspect of vaping that keeps them interested and away from smoking. So in that way, I think clones can be a good thing. And finally, one other reason that might make sense to buy clones, or at least for me to do reviews on them, is that reviews can help promote the authentic. Let's say that I did reviews of the clones that I bought, and the reviews were good that might be enough to entice you as a viewer into buying the authentic, but it might also entice you to buy the knockoff instead. And if the reviews were bad, that might sway you away from the authentic. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the pros and cons of clones. There's no denying that knockoffs are unethical, but there are some benefits to the clone market too. I know this can be a really controversial topic within the vape community, so if you have any thoughts on this, please let me know. Okay, now let's talk about England. It's been two years since Public Health England, or PHE, the Federal Health Agency of England, released their well-known report claiming that vaping is 95% safer than smoking. This report created a major pivot in how the health community viewed vaping products in England. PHE has been strongly recommending it to smokers as a suitable method for quitting. They've asked workplaces to allow vaping on the premises and to create vaping-only sections to keep smokers away from the vapors. And there are actually ads going up in the streets explaining to the public that vaping is much safer than smoking. It's amazing what PHE has done to help smokers quit in England. Well, two years have gone by and PHE just released an update to their original review. In that review, they continue to report that vaping poses only a small fraction of the risks that smoking has, and that by switching to vaping, smokers can reap substantial benefits to their health. They also say that the evidence still does not support the gateway effect. Kids are not transitioning from vaping to smoking. And not only that, but youth smoking rates continue to decrease, and that regular use of vaping among youth is rare and confined almost entirely to kids who have smoked. The UK government set some pretty big goals for themselves in their most recent tobacco control plan that they released last July. In that plan, they also highlighted the popularity of vaping in the UK as a method of quitting smoking, and they announced their partnership with PHE and gave their endorsement of PHE leading the campaign on harm reduction 
for smokers with vaping products. So let's talk about the progress that PHE and the UK government has made so far. In PHE's new report, they state that vaping could be contributing to at least 20,000 new quitters per year, and maybe even a lot more. They're also reporting that in just the last year, vaping has been associated with better quitting success rates and that smoking rates across the country have seen an accelerated drop. The new review also points out some of the misunderstandings that people have about vaping products. For example, they found that less than 10% of adults realize that, that the harmful effects of smoking are from smoking and combustion, not nicotine. They also reported that many smokers still incorrectly believe that vaping is as bad or even worse than smoking, with reports that around 40% of smokers have never even tried vaping before. So clearly there's still a lot of room for educating public about these things. And look how low those numbers are. And this is in a place where there are ads in support of vaping in public streets. Can you imagine how low these numbers are in places like the US? So what's next? PHE and the UK government are now recommending that smokers struggling to quit try switching to vaping while also getting support from a local stop smoking service. They're also asking that healthcare professionals take a new training course provided by the National Center for Smoking Cessation and Training, which provides training on providing behavioral support when switching smokers to vaping. And here's where we can really see how far PHE's research has come in the last two years. Now, PHE and the UK government are recommending that the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, or MHRA, support manufacturers in expediting the licensing of vaping products as medicinal quitting aids and that they are made available to NHS patients. And it only gets better. The government is recommending that NHS, the public health care system in England, create vaping policies that support vaping to help smokers quit, remove smoking shelters from their property, and here's the big one, make vaping products available for sale in hospital shops. Holy crap. I'm just blown away at the progress being made in the UK. It's exciting. I, I, I think eventually the US and other countries will see that vaping really works for harm reduction and will create policies like the UK has. Okay, so that's some great news in England. Now let's talk about something happening here in the US. The FDA advisory board votes against Philip Morris's IQOS. Philip Morris International, or PMI, has been trying to get FDA approval to sell their IQOS heat not burn product in the United States as a reduced risk product, but an FDA advisory panel shut that down at the end of January. The advisory panel voted eight to zero that the IQOS shouldn't be labeled as a safer product than tobacco or that it can reduce the risk of contracting tobacco related diseases. They did however agree that the IQOS exposed users to significantly fewer harmful chemicals in cigarettes, but that doesn't really help PMI's case. It's a big blow to PMI, but it's not over for them yet. The FDA panel suggested that PMI produce more empirical evidence to support their reduced risk claims. The FDA also isn't required to follow the advice of the advisory committee, although it's pretty rare that they don't. PMI says that they have answers to the issues that the panel members raised, so they haven't give, given up yet. One of those issues was that kids who start with vaping have a high risk of moving towards regular cigarettes. Obviously, these people aren't doing any real research because there's lots of studies showing that it isn't true. But if PMI can figure out how to communicate this information in the right way to that committee, maybe their decision can be changed. I have no doubt that the IQOS is much safer than tobacco cigarettes. I'm not a fan of the idea of vaping an actual rolled cigarette filled with a bunch of nasty chemicals like real cigarettes have, but I still think that it's a lot safer than smoking. But I want the IQOS to get approval to potentially open up the door for other vape products to get approval. Okay, now for something that I think is pretty funny because of how ridiculous it is. People believe a joke that the jewel causes cancer. Sometimes when I'm looking for news to cover, I go to Google News and I see what comes up. Google News search is really bad and most of what I find is garbage, but occasionally I come across something interesting and this is one of those times. So supposedly there's a rumor spreading that heavy use of the jewel can cause lung cancer in less than a year. When I first saw this headline, I thought it was a, a joke, like a satirical article, but come to find out, this is actually something that is being spread. So this looks like it's happening mostly within online communities at uh, college campuses, or at least that's where it seems to have started. There are many versions of the story being spread, but one of the most shared versions goes like this. Announcement. One of Chris's friends from college has never smoked weed or cigs, but for the past year he has been an addictive jeweler like constantly, which is basically like all of us, and he was just diagnosed with lung cancer, and his lungs are completely black, and he's 19, and he's probably going to die. Scotty and a few of my guy friends have thrown their jewel away, but just wanted to say because if that happened to any of y'all, I'd probably off myself. So that's the, the story. 
completely black lungs after vaping the jewel for a year. And what's funny is this is so obviously fake, but there are actually people posting videos of themselves on social media throwing away or destroying their jewels. That's 50 bucks down the drain. The rumors have become so widespread that Jewel actually made an official statement on Reddit where they state the obvious. The claims are unsubstantiated. The claims are reckless. Um, people using the Jewel, they're using it to quit smoking. So it's harming them. And their products are temperature regulated to prevent cancer causing chemicals related to combustion. They also announced that the Jewel has actually just recently been tested by independent third party laboratories with validated tests on the aerosol contents of the jewel and that those tests will be released later this month so don't worry you're not going to get the black lung overnight and while we're on the topic of the jewel i want to give a shout out to young maxwell on instagram for letting me know that one of my instagram pics was used in a usa today article without my permission it turns out that this is another hit piece on the jewel and talking about how kids in schools are using the jewel sneaking them into class and how it's dangerous for kids you know the typical regurgitated crap that you see in stories like that as soon as i saw the headline i had fully intended to send a cease and desist to get that image removed but after reading instagram's user agreement i realized that there's probably nothing i can do they embedded the picture using instagram's embedding feature and that's perfectly legal according to the user agreement that i accepted when i set up my account but then i came up with an idea of how to use Use this in a positive way since it's embedded I can update that description to whatever I want and it'll update on their site in real time I've already added some hashtags that say hashtag quit smoking and hashtag prevent smoking I'll update the main description too but before I do I wanted to use this opportunity to ask if you have any advice on what to add to the to the description my first thought was to troll USA Today with something totally inappropriate but luckily the responsible adult in me came up with a better idea since the article is claiming the gateway effect I could mention the latest Public Health England report that debunks it but is there anything else if you've got some ideas throw them out there okay that's all I have for this week you'll find the show notes for this episode on vapepassion.com just do a search for episode 97 if you want to support this show consider donating to my patreon page at patreon.com slash vapepassion you can follow me on twitter at vapepassion and I'm also on facebook if you like this weekly show please consider giving me a thumbs up on the video and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber you can also subscribe to the podcast version of this show on either itunes stitcher or google play if you'd like to get notifications of new reviews or of this show you can sign up to receive my weekly email on vapepassion.com and if you have any questions or comments feel free to email me or leave a comment on one of my videos all right i'll see you on the next one 